We're out here today to install a new well pump system for this customer's lake home. They used to have a spot right here for their camper. That was, I guess, the little front porch. And they also had a sewer hookup, which is right there. And because this house is like 70 years old and they were actually single wides, there's a whole lot of stuff that we're gonna find in the ground. We've actually already labeled where a main power line comes in and another power line that goes up to the boat shed. So we've already got that labeled. If you look here, that is the old single wide and then they built the structure around it. They did the same thing here on this one. This is the old single wide and they built the structure around it. That was the way they were able to get around the laws way back when, when they didn't want you uh, building a home bigger than a specific square footage on a really, really small lot. These lots are probably, I don't know, about 120 foot wide and like 300 feet long. So they're only about a third of an acre. So there's not much here to work with, but we're gonna go ahead and, uh, and get started and cross our fingers and hope to God that we don't hit anything unexpected in the ground. Take off our cover here. So what we've got, we've got a 200, 265 foot well, 107 foot of casing, makes seven gallons a minute. So we're gonna put the pump right at 100 foot. We're also gonna put the bladder tank and all the controls out here at the well, because if you look at that home, there's not much of a crawl space. That little area right there is actually where their water comes in and their current setup is they're sharing a well so they have a well next door and they share with that house and i believe they're sharing it with that house over there so there's uh, either two or three houses on that one well and now these people are going to be separate we've got our 100 foot of 200 psi black roll pipe we've got our uh, 10 2 submersible pump wire and a half horsepower 10 gallon a minute pump and this is our 20 gallon bladder tank So I took the uh, mini excavator and I went ahead and basically flattened out all the dirt and all the stuff that we had here, all the drill cuttings. So I got that looking nice and pretty so we can set our tank here. Next thing I got to go do is come over here to the old system and uh, turn the water off. Because I know I'm going to hit their line in the ground. There's no way to mark just a singular water line. What it looks like to me is they ran a solid piece of three quarter inch pex all the way over here. You got it? Mm -hmm. Don't you ain't gonna drop it on me, are you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Yeah, let's see. I think I don't know. He has a prop stick. Where? Where's the prop the stick? Right. Go. Uh, I don't think that's gonna hold it. Hold on. Let me uh how about this thing right here? Okay. So I think it's this one. Damn. Jesus. Man, that's a bad ball valve. Ugh. Fuck. Mate. Oh my god. <laughs> what the shit? I ain't never broke a handle off a ball valve. Oh my god. It literally broke the damn spout. Ain't that a bitch? Okay. Man, now I gotta go knock on the neighbor's door and tell them I gotta turn the main power off. This sucks. Okay, let me go talk to them. All we gotta do is find a spot to drain the water pressure off. Here we go. Let's go ahead and take this off. This right here is a bad thing to do. I'll leave a hose connected in the wintertime. Because you'll end up <clears throat> busting the freeze-proof faucet in the wall. Huh. No water. Okay, it may be a good thing. All right, now that uh, we've cut everything off, I'm gonna go ahead now and start my trench. Phew, it's cold out here today. And so the fun begins. 
All right, well, I've got about 25 foot dug so far, and I did run into the old Pex water line. It was only buried maybe eight inches under the ground, but right now I have this, uh, the blue flags right here, they indicate, uh, uh, indicate underground power, and I am right here on a blue flag. So I gotta stop now, and I gotta dig it up by hand, because what it does, I believe it takes power either over to that shed, or over there to that power pole, or it could take power up to the boat shed. So we don't want to ruin that. So we're going to do it by hand. You got to love it when homeowners only bury a wire about six inches below grade. Because that's about two feet. <laughs> come here. So this was like the surface of the ground level right here. You come over here. And <laughs> you can tell. That's about how far it was under the ground. <laughs> so we found it. We didn't ruin it. Now I just got to dig around it with the excavator. I'll break my shovel in the process. All right. Well, I am completely finished with the trench all the way out here to the well. And we're good to go there. Justin, as I've been digging, he's been putting the pump system together. Come over here. Got our ABS well seal, ABS 90 to PVC. Uh, we've got 10-2 wire here and a half horsepower pump. It's going in right around 100 feet because we have 107 foot of casing. So we're going to go ahead now and we're going to lower this thing in the well. Good to go. So the next step is to drop the one inch PVC pipe in the trench. And we got to make sure that we go underneath the wire that's over there. And then somewhere up here we have to finagle it and connect it to the PEX pipe that feeds this house. So uh, the homeowner showed up about 30 minutes ago and i basically i noticed this cast iron drain pipe and i just couldn't understand it because the the angle that it was sitting at i was like so worried that there was an old septic tank out here somewhere that we didn't know about so what ends up happening is this house here and that house there share a septic and a well this house owns the septic and that house owns the well so now this house has its own well and the other house still is using this house's septic system so that's the way that it was written up in their deed and their land plot and all that when they bought the house they said they've owned it since like 1967 or something like that so they were i believe probably the original owners of the trailer if not they bought the trailer from the original owner and then they did all the conversion to make it into what you see here No, just take it all the way to the end. Just, uh, yeah, set it up on the uh, cinder block. There you go. That'll leave me enough to where I can just cut it and it'll keep all the dirt out of it. Yeah. I'll just sit here and hold this until you get the other piece. All right. The, uh, the secondary trench here for the power feed has been dug. And I got lucky I didn't hit any uh, any underground power. I did go a little bit uh, shallower, about five feet from the panel because there's like nine conduits going in the ground. And they didn't even know which of the subfeeds, which one of those panels actually fed their house. So their thought was the old rusted one fed their house since it was facing their house. But I kicked the main on the gray one and the main actually cut the power off in this house. So now we know that the gray panel box actually feeds that house. So we're going to run uh, our wire underground here, stick it in conduit, hook up the breaker, and then run it all the way over here to the well where we will have the bladder tank. So that's what we're going to work on next. All right, so we have our water line ran. We have our electric line ran. 
we have our pressure tank all hooked up. Um, just need to uh, put the cover on. We've got our gray conduit going up, going into the hole of the pressure switch. Need to put some uh, some silicone around that hole, and uh, we're good to go here. Next thing I got to do is go over to the uh, panel box and hook up the breaker. I was going to put an electrical outlet out here at the well. I typically dig down, I put a four x four post in the ground, I mount this box, that way I can put a 115 volt outlet. And the idea behind that is you can put a thermo block out at the well and a light bulb in it. And when it gets down to say 35 or 38 degrees, the thermo block is just a thermostatically controlled uh, electrical grid and it basically turns the light bulb on when it gets below 38 degrees underneath the well cover. Once it gets above 45, it kicks off. So why didn't I put that here? Well, the homeowner turns off the main breaker when they're not here. So there's no sense in me putting a 115 volt outlet out here with the ability to give a source of heat because this is a lake home. They're only here during the summertime. So whenever the winter time comes, they kill the main, which kills everything. So there's no sense in me putting an outlet out here. It'd just be kind of a waste of money. So I'm going to go ahead now. We're going to go over there and we're going to wire it up. And then we're going to turn it on and we're going to check for leaks. And see, when we come over here to the panel box, I've got about 18 inches, about 20, you know, just shy of two foot here. But when we come up here, I had to scratch it in. And it's only about 8 or 10 inches because where where was the first one so luckily i started back and uh there's one and that's only i don't know three four inches below grade and then we come over here to this one and i found another one so these were just put in by hand so there's no telling what else i would find under the ground here i mean you come over here to this panel and we've got five pieces of conduit going in the ground and you try to, to mark these things or label these things with our underground cable locator and none of them will fire up. So it's either like they're broken or they just won't send signals. Who knows whatever reason why I won't send a signal. But we only got two wires to send signals and those were the two that we actually have there. So now I get the fun job of wiring this thing up. All right, breaker panel is all hooked up and we're going to label it W-E-L-L. -L. P, U, N, P. Good to go. Let's turn it on. Well, first thing, turn the main on. All right. And we're going to turn the well pump on. All right. No trip. Good sign so far. Let's go check out the well. We got pressure? Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and bleed out the air. Okay, I'm gonna do this, cut that off. All right, good to go. Good to go. All right, all to do now is cover it up. So, what he's doing now, he's gonna turn the power off, and we're gonna leave the valve on but drain the tank dry. That way, that way the tank is dry and empty. We'll drain out all the water pressure. We won't have to worry about any of this freezing. And then once it's done, I'll turn the valve off. And then when the homeowner gets here in the summertime, the only thing they're gonna have to do is turn the breaker on. So once that stops dribbling out water, I'll go ahead and cut it off. And now, they'll be good to go. So we pressure checked it, the house was fine. I didn't wanna go ahead and fill up the toilets or anything like that because then the house would have to be re-winterized. But all that up there that I connected to is good to go. This is good to go. All we gotta do now, cover it up, put the well cover on it, and get our ass out of here. All right. It's 
all covered up and smoothed up. I tried to take all the grit that was out here, kind of in their driveway, and back drag it to try to clean it up as best I could. And then that area I left it a little high because I know it's going to settle. I packed all this stuff down, and Justin's going to put the cover on the well right now. Oh, you know what we need to do? What? We need to put your wall caulk on the, uh, yep. on the thing before we cover that up. Done and done. Sun's going down. Time to go home.